Hi, hello. hello. Welcome back once again to the Planet Comics Facebook page. Oh wait, it's starting. It's not started yet. Are you kidding? No. no. Hey. Oh, there all right, we go. hello. Hello, everybody. That time, and if that was wrong, then we did the intro twice. Then we did the That's intro good stuff. twice. <laughs> We're off to a wonderful start, Katie. Very cool. Well, it's not a start. It's the second one. It it is the second one, actually. Yes. Something second something one. second place. Where is the chat? We want well, to be able no chat to chat right with you guys. Oh, right here. There you are. Hey, okay. Wonderful. Wonderful. We will right. see you. Let's properly introduce ourselves. Yes. I am Tyler. I am Katie. Hello. So how do you how do you think we did on that first one? I think we did very well on the you first so? one. I feel so confident. That's good. That you is think, good. Are you ready, ready to do a second one? <laughs> yeah, I think I'm ready. I, I apologize for my voice if it's weird, but... Have, That's all right. Have you read any books since we? Uh, I have actually. One? Yeah, what'd, yeah. What did you read out of a, out of that last pool? What did you do? Oh, out of the last pool, I the, read the Fourth Man, which was really cool. I still haven't read it. Oh yeah, it's awesome. Nice. Yep. But this time, I'm really excited to talk about a few of these coming yeah. up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna get right into it then. Yeah, go for it. Coming up. All right. So first off, we're gonna start with DC, as always. And once again, if there's any books that we show off, you guys are interested. In, Feel free to leave a comment, and we'll put one aside right for you, just as always. Mm -hmm. Now, the DC, you know, I love DC. Oh, yeah. Big on DC. And DC is just pretty much all Bat Family. It's like 50% of DC at this point is the Bat Family. Batman and all of his millions of sidekicks he's had over the years. Well, this book, only two issues in so far, we have Batgirls. The second issue of Batgirls, so good. Starring Stephanie Brown and Cassandra Cain, two of my absolute favorite characters in comics. Yeah. Cassandra Cain specifically. And now I pushed this book on you hardcore when the first issue came out. You did, you, yeah. You did read it, right? Yeah, no, I read it. And it's like, it feels really nostalgic to me. It feels like, I don't know if you ever seen Totally Spies or Powerpuff <laughs> Girls, but any yeah. like trio of like, like women like fighting mm -hmm. crime together i'm immediately trying to figure out which one of them that i am you know oh, right it is it's so much fun i love the art too the art's kind of unique compared to what and they I've have seen. a great dynamic too i yes. love them yeah in you, you, which one are you between uh stephanie and uh between Who's, stephanie and Cassandra? stephanie's the blonde one right yes i i feel like i am the blonde one so i really like stephanie a lot yeah yeah stephanie's very fun because like her Kane, energy Cassandra Cain's one of the coolest characters, like, in DC. Yes, like, yeah. Like, she is so good. If anyone's, like, taking the Batman mantle, like, whenever, when that never happens, but there's always, like, the stories <laughs> of, oh, who's gonna be the heir to Batman? It should be Cassandra. Yeah. Like, let her be Batman. Because Definitely. she wants it, and she it would be so Well, cool. she's got that cool demeanor, yeah. too, you know? Like, she cares more about, like, Batman than any of them. All but right. this cover is really cool. Definitely let us know if you want this one. We also have... The nice variant, every variant for this is so good. The Karsdok variant, which is just them having a good time playing in the snow with a little cameo from Haley, a.k.a. Bitewing, which is Nightwing's <laughs> three-legged puppy that he adopted in his current run. That versus... makes my heart literally melt. Like, yeah, <laughs> this is the one that I actually am going to be picking up, too. It is awesome. I love all the variants. The first book had a ton of variants. I think this one is, like, one to, like, get all the variants for. Yeah, for sure. Because there hasn't been a bad one. Mm -mm, no, not yet. But, yeah, Batgirls is awesome, so yeah. I can't wait to continue reading it. Riding on the Bat Family train, we mentioned before that we were, uh, or during our first episode, that a new writer had picked up Detective Comics, and that it was going to be weekly for 12 weeks. So, week number two of talking about Detective Comics, and it's a doozy. Once again, oh, yeah. it's pure Bat Family. Uh, Stephanie is a big part of that one. If you oh, like her cool! That. Yeah. So if you want to see her in a little more serious role, not necessarily like you can see her in Detective Comics and Batwoman is a key one in that. Okay. She's like a main character, and basically, I mentioned last time they were building up Arkham Tower, and they're like, "This is going to be the new thing to save all of Gotham," and they pretty much knew how that sounded immediately. Then. Uh, Oh, we got a comment? Oh, oh. Ramel, we got you for we both got Bat you. Girls. Absolutely, yes. 100%. But yeah, Detective Comics he pretty much knew how that sounded to everybody. Like, oh, this Arkham Tower thing, this isn't going to work out. So halfway through the first issue, it just cuts to like three weeks in, and the tower's on fire. Police are surrounding it, and Nightwing is in the tower. He's undercover, and he's like, I don't know where uh, Stephanie is. I don't know what's happening. Like, it's all falling apart. So, and oh, it's going to be... Oh, they referenced that in the Batgirl run. Okay. Yeah, I... yeah. Yeah, so that is going to be, like, they're telling that story a little bit out of order of, like, trying to figure out what just happened with Arkham Tower. 
And so that's the first cover we have of that one. This cover is really cool. That one follows the trend of the other cover with, like, the very realistic, like, takes on the characters. Yeah. Yeah, I love this one of Harley. You like, of Harley. Painting. Yeah, and then we have the car stock brand of that one. We'll have Batman being Batman, brooding in the Batcave, you brooding. know, doing his typical... You gotta get the brooding cover because why wouldn't you, you know? Yeah. That's, like, absolutely... That's a peak Batman shot. Yeah. I haven't even seen... Is there anything even on the monitors? Oh, it's just various Arkham inmates. Super just, cool detail in those, yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah. The art's very nice on this one. Yeah, that one is incredible. And then, once again, still on Batman. Oh, yeah? You like Batman? Crazy. I, I think I'm gonna have to. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't like Batman, you better start liking Batman. That's in right. DC. Pretty much, we have Batman Urban Legends. Woo-wee! Now, Batman Urban Legends is cool because, like I said, Bat Family is the key, and... Because as much as DC would like to, every member of the Bat family can't have a book. So for the ones that can't have a book, we have Urban Legends, which is an anthology book of various different members who don't always like get the limelight, who don't oh, have an ongoing... I didn't know that. Like, That's cool. Tim Drake, my personal favorite, Robin, he was there and he had a big story in Urban Legends and his is wrapping up. And so now we have an uh, appearance from Zatanna, who's not really a member of the bat family but she is like a key part of batman's backstory that a lot of people don't remember so that's cool it's like a six part zatanna story okay and the other story in that one which is will transition me into the variant cover for that features ace the bat hound who, this is like the coolest i love it so much yeah which is such a ridiculous thing but that is a canon thing in Batman, he yeah. has a bat hound. He has a bat hound. I'm so happy about that. It doesn't that. like typically he's just like their dog that hangs out at Wayne Manor. Yeah. But Ace the Bat Hound has a story in this new that Urban makes Legends. Me so happy. And that is uh this is the cover that represents that. A Ace. truly good boy. You gotta get it for the good boy here. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever watch the Crypto the Super Dog cartoon when you were a kid? No, that's a shame. That's yeah, amazing. That was a good cartoon. Ace the Bat Hound was in that. Oh, okay. And he like he, like because they were like, cartoons, like he acted just like Batman. Yeah, he took himself very seriously, and it's like a dog with a Batman cow. That's so great! I love it. <laughs> yeah, this one's really cool, and this was the uh, Urban Legends, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, cool, cool. Yeah, and uh, Ramel, we got you down for Detective Comics. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Moving on. How do you, how do you feel about Batman? Oh man, I feel like I'm gonna have to feel good about <laughs> Batman. <laughs> do we have more? Oh, you you'd be in for a treat. Look at this. More Batman. <laughs> crazy all right so future state a while back uh dc for two months dc stopped doing any of their typical series and they did future state which was a alternate future of all their ongoing titles future state was the first time that john kent from son of kal -El actually uh -huh. had a book as superman okay that was a future state book and stuff like that and typically future state was the bad ending to a lot of the ongoing arcs mm -hmm. like the batman arc at the time was about the magistrate and they were taking over the city in future state they had already taken over and it's like them fighting a losing battle okay so like it's not necessarily canon anymore but there was a lot of cool stuff coming out of it and this is future state gotham where out of all the because there's a million batman books as we already said shocker i know <laughs> future state gotham is them tying all like the loose ends up from that future state timeline to see like where those characters end up okay so there's a lot of good stuff in that i i actually really surprisingly enough i enjoyed future state a lot a lot of people oh. didn't but i thought the batman stuff was the best for sure yeah if anything was going to continue it'd be that. and this is the only uh cover that we've got available this is the for only future state so. showing off was that red hood i believe we have I on the front so it is red hood it looks cool red hood and the next batman jace fox we'll get to him later oh boy more batman nice all right what's next somewhat batman related I think, how do you feel about Harley Quinn? I feel like I'm going to have to like <laughs> Harley Quinn. <laughs> no, I feel pretty good about Harley nah, Quinn. <laughs> Harley Quinn, fan favorite character. Woo! Also, now this is Harley Quinn, the animated series, the Eat, Bang, and Kill Tour, which is a fantastic title. That's amazing. So good. That, uh, oh, what a cover, too. As I said, based on the animated series, I haven't seen the newest season of the animated series. I, it's very funny, though. Mm -hmm. Like, it's a... Uh, pretty much it's what everyone would have wanted about a harley like it's a good old-fashioned like adult comedy show a proper funny one you know how like animated adult comedy can like really skew to be kind of bad <laughs> yes like, yeah the harley quinn show is genuinely very funny and this is just a comic book tie-in for that okay and as far as like harley stuff goes it's some of the best like harley stuff that's awesome yeah yeah another cool cover and ramel then... we got you down for future state too absolutely and then got another one the variant for this one which is features 
Harvey, Harvey, Harley and Ivy. That should be their ship name. I don't know what their ship Harvey. name is. Harvey. Harvey should be their We're ship name. We're making it official. Their that's ship name much, is Harvey. That's much better than Harley oh, or whatever. Right and it's even. them going to a ship club with <laughs> freaking with Cyborg. Wow. Which I, again, haven't seen the newest season of the show. I don't know if that ties into the show or not or if it's just funny. I feel like it's in. So let us know if you want those. All right. Moving on. How do you feel about Batman? Oh, man. Are we going <laughs> to? <laughs> I, I could say it again, but I think they know. All right. <laughs> I love them. Well, this is Batman as the title. I am Batman. Oh, there he is. Except it's actually not Batman. This is Jace Fox. Do you remember in the Batman movies, Lucius Fox, Morgan Freeman in the Christopher Nolan ones? Yeah. The guy who makes all Batman's tech. Well, this is his son. Oh. Yeah. Sick. Okay. And uh, the, he has found... Uh, he came back from the war, I believe. He's either a war or a spy, and he stumbled upon one of his dad's old, like, factories where he was, like, making tech for Batman, and he found this Batman suit. So he's taking it upon himself now to, like, continue on the legacy of Batman, and so this is, like, his journey, and he's pretty much already gotten the blessing from the Bat family, mm -hmm. because Batman's currently out of the country anyways, like... He's doing good stuff. There's no harm in him doing what he's doing. Okay. And he's actually moving, I believe, I don't know if it's this issue or next issue, moving to New York City oh, instead of Gotham. That's going to be interesting. That, that's an attempt to, like, separate him even more so from the Bat family, maybe, like, get him his own identity. Okay, cool. Yes. And making sure our internet connection. Let us know if we are having issues connecting or anything. But we're going to continue, and hopefully it's good. So, <laughs> yep, I, I am Batman here. Yeah. All right, what's next? Moving on. More Batman. Sort of. <laughs> how do you feel about Batman? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you how I feel about Batman. Yeah? You know, uh, he's pretty good, he's but pretty not good. as cool as the Joker, baby. Whoa! Wow. That's crazy. There he is. Surprisingly enough, I love that Joker book. Do like, you really? I'm one of the ones that may, I feel like Joker and Harley is kind well, Joker and Harley together is played out for sure. Yeah. But Joker stuff in general can be overdone, but this book, the writing on it, is so good. Written by James Tinian, writer oh, of... Oh, uh, Something's Killing the Children, right? Yeah. yeah. And so he's got a full-on, like, horror story going with this. And Oh, cool. The key thing with this is that you would think, oh, well, the Joker can't really carry a book. That's true. He can't. Because this is actually <laughs> a Jim Gordon book in disguise. Commissioner Gordon. Oh, nice. Yeah. And the plot of this is that he has been hired by some super secret sketchy agency because he's not Commissioner Gordon anymore. He's uh, retired. Oh. They've hired him and they've given him unlimited resources to track down and kill the Joker. Okay. And he is going to do it. That is what he said. Nice. Okay. So it's following him, his journey. And on the cover here, we have... Uh, we have the Sampson family, I believe, something like that. Their Joker is being, uh, he's being encountered by many different people that he's wronged in his life. Mm -hmm. And this is a, like, a Texas Chainsaw Massacre, like, family-inspired, like, family oh, cannibals man. that, like, they want to eat the Joker. Okay. Because he killed one of their, their, like, their fathers or something. Oh, man. Wow. Yeah, they look pretty healthy, too. <laughs> yeah, they look like they get a well-balanced, uh diet there so nice do we have another cover for this we one? have several cover for this one i love and hate this cover at the same time it's so cool. tell me about it cardstock variant it is uh the joker in a sweet tuxedo sweet pose along with harley and punchline now punchline the other girl on him that you probably don't recognize mm -mm. that is the joker's new girlfriend since you know harley has uh -oh. gotten away from the uh. joker because that was a incredibly unhealthy mess of a relationship uh, you go, girl. Yeah, she's, like, doing her own thing. They needed someone to fill in that void that Harley used to fill way back in the early days of her character uh -huh. when she was just, like, a sidekick and not much of anything else. Mm -hmm. So that's what Punchline is. And so now Joker has Punchline with her, and she has, like, a side story within the book as well. And so this is a cool little pose between with Joker and, and Harley and Punchline. I love it. And this one is the B cover, if you want the B cover of this Joker run. And... Our final Joker cover here, just another cool. Oh, I like side this one. Look of at that. the Joker. Yeah, I, let me get a closer look at that oh, one yeah, again. Yeah. Tell me about it. It's pretty much like it's it's typical Joker artwork, but it, the art's so good. Yeah, this like, one's really cool. This might be my favorite one out of them all. This is the C cover. I want to write off the Joker because of how much he gets used, but then you know when he gets put in a good story, I'm like, that's ah, so good. He's good for a reason. I mean, he's overused for a reason. Yeah. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, it's. It's one of those things where like, I, I don't want to like it, but it's so good. I can't I mean, not Your favorite like it. Joker is the Jared Leto one, right? Oh, 100%. Yeah. Yeah, look, great. Moving on. I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> What's next? Something else. Uh, 
that's also going to be hard for me to talk about. Brian Michael Bendis is the current writer on the Justice League book, and a while back he wrote Legion of Superheroes, which is the superheroes from the 30th century of DC Comics. Oh, wow. Yeah, and a lot like John Kent spent some time with them, uh, Superboy, as in young Superman in the past has spent time with them, a lot of stuff there, and Brian Michael Bendis is a big fan of the Legion of Superheroes, and his book, uh, I don't remember if it got discontinued or if he ended it himself, but now he's coming back combining his Justice League book with the Legion of Superheroes in this little mini-series to finish off uh, the Gold Lantern saga, which Gold oh. Lantern is the character on the front here who was a brand new character introduced in his Legion book, okay. and we don't know anything about it because... Lanterns have a very clear role in the world of DC. Yeah. Of just like, you know, each one represents, you know, part of something in the emotional spectrum. Mm -hmm. We don't know what Gold Lantern represents. Oh. Or like what his deal is. And so this book is supposed to like solve that mystery finally and say like what his purpose is. So that's a pretty big deal. So this is yeah. like a big for, like deal for the, I guess, the universe or whatever to yeah. figure that out. Limited series, only believe, six issues, I believe. Okay. Yeah. So that's a big one. And Ramel, we got you down for all the Joker covers too. Absolutely. We got another cover for this one. Another cover for this one. Featuring Superman. Well, I want to say Superman. I guess it would be because it's Justice League versus Legion of Superheroes. I honestly almost said Superboy because oh. he has more of a connection with the Legion. Okay. But I guess that would be Superman. Superman and Lightning Lad. Okay. The Legion of Superheroes has some of the best names for Lightning heroes. Lad. This is the B cover, too. Yeah, Lightning Lad looks pretty sick. Yeah. Huh. All right, yeah. what's next? Moving on. We have Pennyworth. What's the deal with Pennyworth? Do you know who Pennyworth is? No, I have no idea. Pennyworth's full name's Alfred Pennyworth. That's no! Batman. <laughs> what? Yeah. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, so okay. Batman's butler. Before he was Batman's butler, he was a secret agent spy. I am so happy to hear that. Yeah, and he uh, there's actually a TV show. I don't remember on what network, but I heard it was incredibly good. Just like a spy thriller, James Bond type thing. Well, because I would always mm -hmm. see these covers come in, or I guess this is, yeah, this is a sixth one. So I'd see these covers come in, and I would just, like, what is this, like, James Bond-esque, yeah, like, that's cover? Alfred. Oh, that's so cool. You like Very Batman? nice. <laughs> I do. Full <laughs> Justice League versus... All right, I got you, Ramel. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. All right, what's next, though? You like Batman? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yes, I do. What about Robin? <laughs> oh, I do like Robin, actually. <laughs> Check him out. There he is. Robin and Batman, number three. This has been a pretty, like, hot, limited series that everyone's thought about. It features, uh, it, it's about Dick Grayson's year one, basically, as a Batman sidekick. Oh, okay. It's, it's kind of like a yeah. throwback? Or... Yeah, like a flashback, kind of. It's it's an Elseworld, so it's not in continuity. There are some, like, Batman acts a little off at times. Well, I would say off, but it's not the main universe. It's not oh. the main continuity. So there actually has been some controversy with that last issue, the way that Batman talks to robin where okay it's like, oh this is like you know he's getting a little crazy here but i know this book has been like big everyone's talking about it and yeah. I, that's the only cover that we have available that is the uh oh yeah the this variant is, for that yeah and the b cover for this so you definitely want to pick that one up i'm all about dick grayson though any story yeah. with him i mean dick grayson's one of the best characters that dc's ever i know that's made. one of your favorites like, he is like the heart of dc and that's something they've said a million times over as well very yeah awesome so robin and batman 3 what's next yep. final dc we have the Titans United. Now, there are many different groups of Titans and Teen Titans. Do you know anything about the Titans? So, I know Teen Titans in the way that, like, I loved the show The, the 2003 oh, cartoon. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely loved it. Which is so good. We got you down for Robin and Batman. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, it's so good. And there's also the live-action Titan show right now. Okay. Which this, the only similarity that this has with that show is that it's sort of a tie-in. It's not in that continuity, but it is that same team of Titans. Oh, it's, cool. Uh, it's Nightwing and Red Hood and Beast Boy, Raven, Donna Troy, who is featured on the front here. Okay. And uh, who is the people who are also featured on our one variant for that, Hawk and Dove. And Hawk and Dove, I think, are the best part of that live-action Titan show. Okay. That Titan show is kind of all over the place, but they genuinely are really good. And that I think they're the highlight of, the, of this book as well. Okay. Because that's a very underrated group of dc characters yeah but like they're like meant that they're like dc's like power couple quote so to speak cool he's like because he's hawk so he's angry and he's wrathful and she's the so she's the peaceful one so it's like he's a very the, balanced yeah dynamic like there. she balances him out and stuff like that and this they is the B cover for this one too yeah i like that a lot I, I they like look cool cover. yeah they're probably like that cover i almost want to buy the book just for that cover yeah yeah <laughs> Awesome. So good. So I That's guess it. next is Marvel, right? Yeah. That's all we've got all for we DC. All we have for DC. Moving on to, Mon uh, to Marvel. 
we have uh, last week I talked about Wastelanders uh, Doom mm-hmm. and the Wastelanders book and all that. Well, I believe this will be the final entry in the Wastelanders miniseries. We have Wastelanders Black Widow. I like these Wastelander covers a whole lot. That that's something I think that yeah, they seem very interested in. Last time we talked about it too, right? Like the the old man Logan and the Wastelander world that like Marvel kind of created, mm-hmm. and like that's. It's something that they keep going back to, I think, because they know it works. Like, that was such a fascinating story that uh, they just had no choice. We got you down for Titans United, both covers. Nice. Good choices there. Yeah. yeah. So we have Wastelanders, Black Widow, and the variant for that. So I guess you call her Old Woman Black Widow because that's how everyone in that universe is called. So Old Woman Black Widow alongside Old Man Hawkeye. The the one armed, I believe he's one armed. Does he have one arm? No, I'm, I'm thinking of two. old man Green Arrow. I got oh, that mixed okay. Up. Archers, you know. Two arms confirmed. You know, yes, yeah. losing he's the arms. He's blind. That's what it was. Oh, okay. You know, if it's an archer in like dystopian future, you got to take the eyes of the arm. One of them. You really like, do. Gotta, you got to like remove something to make their job a little harder. Like, yeah. That's how you keep them interesting. I mean, obviously, he doesn't need his eyes, and he's getting by just fine. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, those are the two covers that we've got for the Wastelanders one. This is the B cover here. Stepping away from the Elseworld stories from Marvel into the main universe, we have I love this the cover. thing. Dude, look at it's this one. so good. Wow. I just love that the thing has a comic book again because I okay. am I'm a Fantastic Four defender. Oh yeah. They've haven't like been in the limelight for a bit, mm-hmm. and a lot of people, you know, the MCU is very popular, so the MCU kind of dictates the popularity of Marvel characters. Mm-hmm. But Fantastic Four. I I grew up with them with that cartoon that was awful, <laughs> but yeah. I have a soft spot for them. And the thing was always like one of the coolest. I remember as a kid, like the debate being like, "Oh, the thing versus the Hulk, who would win the fight?" Oh, totally. Yeah, yeah it's the Hulk. Uh, and then <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty obvious. Nice. <laughs> and uh, now the thing has his own book again, which I believe the plot is he's been dumped by his girlfriend Alicia. And he was contacted by this, like, weird matchmaking service that has some, like, like you know, nefarious purposes going on. Yeah. And he's just getting ripped into all kinds of shenanigans. Nice. Very good. So there's the cover for that one. Yep, this is the A cover here. I, I love this cover. Yeah. We got some other ones, though? Oh, yeah. The only other cover we have for that one, is, I don't know, I'm not sure which one I like more, between the boxing one or, like, the standard action shot of the thing. Look at him go. That, like, that's a good one because it shows off one of my favorite things about the thing of his, uh, he's got the Ninja Turtle disguise. You know, when I, oh. I go out in the public, trench coat and, like, a hat, hat and that's it. Sunglasses, too, right? Yeah, like, I'm definitely not a giant rock man under here. I'm like, just a bunch of kids in a trench coat. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, Duh. And so that's him, like, ripping out of his wonderful disguise to spring into action. We got you down for both uh, Wastelanders books from now. But, yeah, this one is, uh, yeah, the B cover, I believe. Very cool. All right, and we have, uh, up next... Back in the, your favorite uh, sci-fi franchise. That's I think right. You said we last did discuss time, that. Uh, we talked about that. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Star, Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> right? Star Wars. That's what you said. I did say that. Definitely. <laughs> it's very... You said it was cool. I love the original trilogy. Yes. Yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> Who's your favorite Star Wars bounty hunter? Because that's what this book's about. I mean, if I'm... I know Boba Fett. Okay. I was like, if I can get her to name drop Boba Fett, I'll consider it a success. Okay. Okay. Success. So, yeah. <laughs> so, this is about Boba Fett. <laughs> it's not. It's is not? It not? <laughs> It's about the other... Well, yeah. Star Wars is my favorite, so... Yeah, it's about all the other wonderful bounty hunters uh, in the Star Wars universe. Uh, Bosk. Okay. And uh, I don't know if Cad Bane's in that book or not. He was a big one. A lot of cool uh, Star Wars bounty hunters. That's like... It's like Jedi's Imperials are bounty hunter. Okay. <laughs> That's like all Star Wars. Gotcha. And this is the A cover, too. That so. is. The, uh, the B cover that we have for that one is a plug for... Uh, it's the Star Wars Resistance cover, which has been on their... Last time we had the Last Jedi cover, which is just random art of Last Jedi characters. Yeah. This one is random art of uh, characters from the show Star Wars Resistance. Oh. Which is the only Star Wars animated series I've not watched. Oh, nice. Okay. I've heard the animated series are actually really good. The animated series are arguably better than the movies. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Like, they are phenomenal. All right. What's next? Moving on. Still in a galaxy far, far away, we have Star Wars, The High Republic. I need to get into these High Republic books because ever since, like... Disney bought Star Wars and they gave the comic book rights to Marvel. Mm -hmm. They basically retconned all those old novels. Like all the Star Wars fans were furious because they just like Kevin J. Anderson is weeping right now. (laughs) Like all those books, all those novels your dad read of like what happens after the original trilogy, done. Didn't happen. Oh man. And so this is part of their new initiative of like new expanded universe where 
You have uh, the Old Republic, which you might have heard of, Knights of the Old Republic, yeah. the famous video game. And older than the Old Republic, I believe, is the High Republic. It's the a bold, old, old Republic. The Older Republic, a.k.a. the High Republic. All right. They introduced, uh, this is part of the new Disney era of Star Wars. And ever since they announced this, I've been like, oh, what kind of stuff can they do with that? And I need to get into these books. So they have these, and they have the novels. And I think a game coming out. Oh, nice. also is going to tie into that. Yeah. So very good stuff. We got another cover for this one, too, we right? We do have another cover. Yeah. Sweet action shot of, like, this character with the with the yellow lightsaber. Which we know about lightsabers, about the about the colors. Oh, about the colors! I played the Lego game, so I know that they uh, represent different people, right? Sort of. It's yeah. basically good or bad or like anti-hero kind of thing. Yeah, I remember just trying to get the purple one. I mean, that's the best one. Yeah. That one's like I'm a good guy, but I got a little bit of bad in but there. But I got a little bit of edge too. Yeah, <laughs> I, I blue lightsaber, a little, little bit of red, make it a purple. Ooh, ooh, this is the B cover. Yeah, this is the B cover yeah. for this High Republic. So, away from Star Wars, back into Marvel, we have. Marvel Voices Heritage, oh. which is a big, like, I'm not sure initiative or movement they're pushing, but I am very interested in it. It's uh, all their, like, Native American characters and indigenous oh, people. And wow. it's like an anthology book about all those different characters they have in the universe and written by uh, Native Americans. Oh, thank goodness. That's yes. awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's not like, yeah, well, Stanley's dead, but, you know, it's like just old white man, write this book, talk yeah. about, like... <laughs> we have some representation here. Yeah. Very nice, though. Yeah, that's going to be cool. I might actually, I don't read a lot of Marvel, but this might be a good thing to get into. I think I'll yeah, pick that up. Yeah, I think that's a good way to learn about some new characters, too. Well, not yeah. new characters, but characters that you don't see often. Like, interesting ones as well. Yeah, a lot nice. of X-Men in there, too, which that's just how Yeah, Marvel I think rolls. I'm going to pick that up. All right, moving on, we have Miss Marvel. Oh, uh, Miss Marvel. What do you know about Captain Marvel? Um, I don't know anything about Miss Marvel. There's a movie. Well, that, that there's the Captain Marvel movie. Oh, Ms. no. Miss Marvel is her sidekick. Oh, okay. See, the Captain Marvel that everyone knows today, Carol Danvers, she originally was Miss Marvel back when Captain Marvel was a dude and no one cared about him. Okay. They killed him off. She got an upgrade. She went from Miss Marvel to Captain Marvel. This is the new Miss Marvel, Kamala Khan. And she basically has, like, Reed Richards' Mr. Fantastic stretchy powers. Oh, okay. Nice. <laughs> and, like, she is such a likable character. Everyone loves her. She definitely, uh, like... She, she like talks. She writes fan fiction of other superheroes and like I marks out that. every time she sees them. She's got a new show coming on Disney Plus pretty soon. Does she? Yeah, okay. So they're gonna be moving her into the MCU very quickly. So all the more reason to pick this up, probably. Oh yeah. I like the fact that she writes fan fiction of different superheroes. <laughs> yeah. I might have to read this for that. Yeah, people <laughs> love Kamala Khan. They really like her more than the actual Captain Marvel. Yeah. Very nice. This is, yes, yeah, this is the B cover, actually, yeah. so. so. And here will be the A cover for that one, featuring another Marvel fan favorite, Loki. Oh, okay, yeah. You, you know anything about Loki? Uh, Tom Hiddleston, right? Good, good enough. That's I know the important <laughs> stuff about Loki. That's <laughs> what matters. Yeah. <laughs> nice. And this is the A cover? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I like that one, though. Nice. All right. Now, uh, and something that most people, I, I think, typically aren't going to associate with Marvel King Conan, as in Conan the Barbarian. I didn't know that Conan stuff was actually, like he said, Marvel. Yeah. Um, I like Conan a lot, Did you though. watch the movie? Did you just the Arnold movie? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes. I went through a whole Arnold stage, and that was that, a very important part of it. That might be the first movie I've asked you about that you've, like, actually said yes to. Yeah, I know. And right? you were like, oh, yeah, of course it's in Conan. I mean, I'm a woman of culture. Come on. <laughs> he punches the camel? Like, <laughs> yes. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> This is, yep, this is King Conan, though? King Conan. Man, I need to pick this up. I didn't know. Only two issues in. Okay. Now's a good time to hop into it. Yeah, yeah. Also, I remember we got you down for Marvel Voices. Oh, we definitely do. We got a different cover for King Conan. Different oh, cover for King I Conan. this one. Look yeah. at that. I, I do need to, I need some more, like, awesome Vikings and, like, warriors. You it know, is, it is literally, like, an aesthetic of mine at this it's point. It's so cool. Yeah, it's just very cool. I am excited. I think I'll be picking this one up as well. All right, moving on. We have... Hawkeye, Kate Bishop Hawkeye to be exact. What do you know about Kate Bishop or Hawkeye? Um, I don't know a lot, but I know the Kate Bishop one. I've heard a lot of people talking about it, and it looks fun. Yeah. It looks really sweet. Kate Bishop is the new Hawkeye. Uh, she replaces the old one. They have this book out now because she's been introduced into the MCU as well through mm -hmm. the Hawkeye show. That Hawkeye show is basically her show featuring Hawkeye. Okay. Like, as, as cool as he is, debatable, uh, she is infinitely cooler. <laughs> That's my hot take. And All right. I love Kate Bishop, so this is definitely like a key book for anyone that's also a fan of the MCU. Mm -hmm. Got you down for King Conan as well. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Good choices for now. All yeah. right. Yeah, and this is uh, the A cover to this Kate Bishop one. And we've got another one too, right? Yeah. 
Which I might like this one more. Yeah. It's just a nice shot of Kate Bishop. It is. Very nice. What do we got next? Up next, we have Devil's Reign, which is like a big event happening. I keep hearing about it. It's like all the it's the the key event that Marvel's doing at the moment. Mm -hmm. And basically it is uh Wilson Fist, do you know who that is? I don't know. The Kingpin. Oh, okay. Okay, Yeah, yeah. yeah. The Kingpin has uh been the mayor of uh, New York for like the past two years, I believe, in like the Marvel universe. Okay. And he's now cracking down on all the street level superheroes. Ah. And you know, like the key street level superhero. If it's not Spider Man, it's Daredevil. Yeah. So and with Kingpin being the villain, it's a big, that's why it's called Devil's Reign, big Daredevil story arc. Okay. A lot of stuff. And this is a tie-in issue featuring the Superior Four. We have uh, we have Doc Ock in there showing off, which definitely take on the, the Sinister Six and mm-hmm. the Superior Four. We have that cover, and we have this cover, another great Doc Ock one. Yep, and this is, this is the A cover. The previous one was the B cover. Yeah, I think I like this. I think I like the other one more, actually. <sighs> really? Yeah, I, mean, really? I don't know. It's kind of it's kind of a toss up. What's your favorite Spider-Man villain? Do you have one? I mean, I guess I'm gonna be basic and say Green Goblin, but because like I it's, it's it's I've had a debate with friends before about who's the best like Spider-Man villain. Yeah, between like Doc Ock and Green Goblin. Doc Ock is interesting. I will say yeah. that. What we got next though? Up next we have the Amazing Spider-Man. I'm gonna ask you a question. Okay, so who? What is a uh, Spider-Man's real name? Oh God, I mean. Peter Parker. Wrong. Oh, no. At least in the context of this story, it's wrong. Okay. Because in this storyline, which we are how many chapters in, it does not say. It's 80-something, right? Well, that's it's 83 oh. issues, but in the middle of a story arc called Spider-Man Beyond, I, I want to say it's like 10 issues in to Spider-Man Beyond. Okay. It's uh, The Spider-Man of that story is Ben Riley because Peter Parker is in a coma, and Ben Riley is Spider-Man's clone from the 90s clone saga. That was one of the most convoluted Spider-Man stories <laughs> ever. Okay, <laughs> nice. I love to hear it. Surprisingly enough, they brought Ben back because they always had to reference the Clone Saga because that's how like infamous it was. He's back now and he's been Spider-Man for a good seven or eight issues and people love it. Okay, like surprisingly, enough, like yo, Ben Riley's like book is actually really good. Like nice. he's actually a cool character for once. And so this is continuing on with the Spider-Man Beyond storyline. Uh, everyone is out to get Ben Riley, which is like the funniest thing about it because Peter is in a coma. And here's this other guy, Spider-Man. Everyone's like, yo, you did that. And he's like, I'm, I really didn't. Please leave me alone. And, like, all of the heroes hate him, like, because they think he had something to do with Peter Parker being yeah. in a coma. <laughs> all right. Yeah. This cover, yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. So check that one out. I don't think we have too many extras of this, so if you want it, probably say so Spider-Man now. Spider-Man has been a big one. Like, yeah. Definitely. Can you pull Austin Gregory, Devil's Reign. We gotcha. 100%. All right. What's next? Up next, back to Conan. All right, you like Conan. What about Conan with the Avengers, with various Marvel characters? Uh, that sounds amazing. I'm like, I should know about it. Look at this cover! No! Yeah. Check that out. Uh, so the story of that one basically is that Conan has somehow had been uh, teleported to the Savage Lands, which is a like hidden prehistoric area in the Marvel Universe. Oh, cool. And when he ends up there, he runs across several other Marvel characters. They all have the classic fight, misunderstanding, and now they're back in it. Ramel, we got you down oh, for yep. Spider-Man. got you down. Uh, yeah, so now they're back in it, and they are the Savage Avengers, which is just just an excuse to have Conan with all these awesome, like, Conan and Wolverine, and what, what more do you want? Oh, that is so cool, it's yeah. It's like the manliest tag team Marvel could, like, come up with. How many, so we're 28 issues into this. We are. Man, I'll, I have to do some catching up, but I feel like I need to, because Conan's a part of it. And we'd yeah. have a different cover for this one, too. I like that one. It's snowy, look at him, he's cool. This yeah. is the A cover. Yeah, let us know if you want that. And we got you down for the Spider-Man. Tyler might have already said that. We Also, I've now seen it in the pile. Here are the other two covers for Spider-Man. Oh, nice. Okay, yeah. So, I think this is a Momoko one, too. So, okay, we've got some more covers. Ramel, if you want a specific cover, if you want all three, let us know. This one is awesome. Definitely check that yeah. one out. Yeah, that's a that's a big... Uh, definitely check that one out. Uh, yeah. <laughs> on brand. A, yeah. <laughs> Uh, all right what's next though all right we talked about uh devil's reign so coming out of devil's gotcha. reign uh to carry on uh matt murdoch's uh quest for vengeance and justice and all that we have electra who is now taking up the devil name elect she is daredevil woman without fear this is a three issue limited series again ties into devil's reign uh the other cover for spider-man also absolutely i'm putting you down other for covers the uh, got both of them gotcha yeah, so Daredevil, Woman Without Fear, like I said, three-issue limited series going into Devil's Reign. What do you know about Elektra? 
Um, I've heard the name. Isn't there a movie? There is a movie. Yeah. You shouldn't watch it. Okay, deal. <laughs> Jennifer Garner, though. Oh, okay. I mean, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so she, I think she's been Daredevil for a while. Like, so this is, but finally they, in the interview they said, like, her story was getting too big just to, like, include it in Daredevil or Devil's Reign. We just had to tie it out and, like, do a little limited series nice. just to finish this up. All right. And they've teased, like, oh, a, a deep, dark secret in Electra's past is, is going to be revealed. Oh, boy. Ooh, what's it going to be? Got to find out. And this is the first issue. All right. Yeah, we got some other covers for it. We do. Hey. We have that one. Got this one right here. Very this cool. is. I like her Daredevil suit. B. A lot. Yeah, the Daredevil suit is very, very cool. It, it's very edgy. So, and I guess that's Daredevil's kind of a more edgier character, right? Oh yeah, hundred percent. Like that. That is a, a little uh, not like Punisher edgy, but like mm -hmm. it's like on the on the Marvel scale of edgy from like Spider Man on one end to like Wolverine and Punisher. He's like right there. Okay. That end, you know. All right. This do we have a, one more cover for it? We do have one more cover for that. This one. Oh, A, B, C, D, E, F. F cover, I guess. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Check that one out. as well. well. What a wonderful way to figure out what cover is. I, in counting on my hands, too. Don't yeah. yet. Got to figure that one out. But check this yeah, one out. Nice. Definitely check that out. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, God. What's next? Last in Marvel, we have Doctor Strange, uh, the death of Doctor Strange tie-in, Bloodstone, featuring uh, Elsa Bloodstone, which a character I don't know too much about. I do know that since she's a monster hunter and is pretty much like a Buffy the Vampire Slayer oh, nice. as character for Marvel. We got you down for Daredevil now. All covers? Absolutely. Got you down. Yeah, and so right. we have uh, Bloodstone there, and here are the other covers for that. All right, and this one is, the one I just showed was the B cover. This one is the A cover. Is that fireworks going on in the back? Oh, no. Cool. Look at that. Yeah. What's the last one we got? Last one, a little, like, profile cover shot off Water oh, Bloodstone. I like that one. You know. Nice. Find out more in the issue, Death of the Strange Bloodstone. And that's the, that's the number one, too. So. Yeah. All right. Next up, we've got the indie stuff. So we're going to start real strong here, and we're going to be showing off the... Sonya covers, but this time we've got a kind of new series, Hell Sonya. Hell Sonya. So that's a sweet cover. It, no, this one specifically yeah. I chose first because I actually really like this yeah. cover. The art is beautiful. This is cover B. Uh, oh, Bloodstone, all covers. We got you, Ramel. One, two, three. All right. But yeah, Hell Sonya. Hell Sonya, I can't say that I've ever expressed interest in a Sonya series, but Hell Sonya, Sonya looks really cool. Uh, this is the E cover here. Also incredible. But, yeah. Well, don't, don't sleep on the rest of the covers. No, no, no. This, yeah. this one's pretty cool. Yeah. I do like, I like the design of Sonya a lot. Like, her wings look... Yeah. I don't know, fleshy? Is that Dude, a weird like, word? like, the fire hair. Like, like yeah. very cool. That's, like, design I've seen, like, with a lot of characters before, and it's always cool. Yeah. This is the A cover for Hell Sonya. Let's see. This one's, uh... This one might be my favorite of all of Yeah, this is the D cover here. Yeah. So, yeah, the fire hair. She's looking very Super Saiyan there. Yeah. <laughs> it really is. All right, well, what next? We've got the C cover. That one. Hell Sonya. And then we actually have... Oh, what are these called? The blank. We've got the yeah. blank, like... Yeah. They're called something, and I'm blanking. I'm blanking, You're blanking on, on it. Them. Whoa, oh, boy. It's like you we playing got, that one. Yeah, uh, you know. We got another... We have uh, a bunch of these, actually. But, yeah, let us know if you want that one for Hell Sonya. We've got one more. This one's the P. Yep. We got this one here. There's a... I think the series, or the Sonya series, always has, like, this design. So, if you've been collecting those, this will just stay consistent for your series there. Oh, yeah. You gotta have, like, all, like, the... I mean, Sonya lives off the, color, the covers. Yeah, like, yeah. Much like the Emperella. <laughs> yeah. Couldn't tell you what happens in those books. But the covers are phenomenal. This series, I am mildly interested in. I don't know if, if I will pick it up, but it's a it, possibility. It has a movie. Oh, does it really? Yeah. Okay. So next up, we've got Buffy, the last Vampire Slayer. This is number two. It's old Lady Buffy. Old. Okay. All right. <laughs> I That's what it seems like. Yeah, the last Vampire yeah. Slayer's got like her. The cover has her like. Well, some of the um, other covers for the first issue too actually has her like, yeah, old on the yeah. cover. So I don't know much about Buffy, admittingly, but I feel like yeah, there. Buffy as it as it came out. A little bit, but mm -hmm. it's been kind of a long time. Big, Honestly, big Joss Whedon fan. Uh, mm -hmm. no, no, <laughs> not really. <laughs> but this, uh, I know there's a lot of Buffy fans out there, so definitely pick up number two if you've been reading this. So this series, this is uh, Department of Truth, issue 15, so it's kind of way into there. 
but this is very, very cool. I'm interested in this series based off this cover alone. I think that's Mothman, or it looks like a cryptid. I don't know much about the series. It has the moths along the back there, too. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, Department of Truth, I've heard uh, really good things about. Uh, like conspiracy so... theory kind of cryptids, maybe. Yeah, yeah. It's 15 issues in. If you've been reading it, you know, obviously pick this one up. But I hope to kind of catch up on this eventually. Who's your favorite cryptid? Who's my favorite cryptid? Yeah. It's actually Mothman, yes, for sure. Good. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's the only correct answer with that. So we've got uh, Doctor Who. We Have got you Doctor Who ever comic. watched any Doctor Who? David Tennant's. Only David Tennant's? Only David Tennant's. What Tenet. about Christopher Eccleston, the one season before David Tennant? No, I think I've caught a few you of those, you but... Skipped. He had one season. I need to. He's I an mean, underrated Doctor. I know. I'm I was going to conventions and stuff, and at the time it was like David Tennant was the yeah, one. Yeah, I mean, so. he still is the one. I stopped, like, this Doctor... Matt Smith, I believe, is that on Oh, there? Matt Smith, yeah, he was yeah. the one after, I think. Phenomenal actor. I stopped watching Doctor Who when he became the Doctor. Really? Yeah. I think he probably has done a good job. I haven't heard anything bad. But this is issue three, uh, so if you've been reading that, definitely let us know. Got you down for Department of Truth. Oh, Absolutely. very cool. Let me know if that's good or not. I really want to read it. Um, so yeah, uh, we've got these Grim Spotlights Held Child. This looks very cool. I can't say I know anything about it. Xenoscope comics. We have a fun history with them here. Oh, really? Yeah. So, uh, and what have you, it's another Grim Fairy Tale one? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, sweet cover. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yep, she looks really cool. So, yep, check that one out. Kind of reminds Ooh. me of, uh, who we talked about last week, Crush and Lobo. Looks like, oh, looks Crush like and Crush. Lobo. Yeah, 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 definitely. It's like that same vibe. So, Lunar Room number two. We got a bunch of one in a few weeks ago. I think this is, like, a werewolf story or something, I believe being called lunar i mean that's a lunar room is uh, a yeah you know it's kind of context clues there yeah but we've got that cover there for lunar room and then we've got that one there i really love the character design uh she looks awesome she does look really cool, no actually. yeah it yeah. looks like a really uh, engaging series so werewolves are underutilized in like monster I'm kinda, things yeah i'm happy to see that they have like a werewolf series like, that's running like, because you know, you know vampires get everything and like anytime it's a vampire show like wolves are like weird like hick people that are yeah. terrible. Unless they're Jacob, and then it yeah. starts a but whole cultural his, divide. Yeah, but his family was terrible, too. He was on a good one. That's true. Alright, this next one. So, I actually was able to read and pick up the first one of this. This is Maniac of New York, The Bronx is Burning. There was an original series of Maniac of New York, which I did not read, but I read the first issue to The Bronx is Burning, and this has definitely got a very, like, Jason vibe to yeah. it. I mean, look at the whole character. Jason, like, Casey Jones, hockey mask. Yeah, and... yeah. It's funny, though. So, in the first issue, and I won't go too in-depth with it, this is issue number two, but it's, um, basically, he goes into a school, and he's a big murderer mm -hmm. or whatever, but the funniest <laughs> thing with that is... Like, when he shows up, all the kids hold up their cell phone, and that's, like, a big joke that they make in the series. It's like, why the heck are you taking pictures of this mass murderer right in front of you? Like, stop <laughs> trying to, like, Facebook yeah. Live it or Instagram Live it. So, this series has been fun. The first one was cool. I definitely recommend it if you're, like, a horror fan. Um, it's very nostalgic in the way of, like, slow guy following yeah. you. Yeah. So, oh, cool. Ramel, we got Lunar Room, both covers. Good nice. Time. All right. Oh, now you get to talk about your favorite Star Wars. Oh, yes, my favorite Star Wars. No, so we got the High Republic Adventures, from which I've been told is more of like a not kid friendly one, but it probably is. less serious. Yeah, actually, it probably is because we got a Sonic ad. On well, the back. IDW like typically the fact that they've even split like the rights amongst Marvel and IDW is interesting to me because yeah. I was under the impression that Marvel did the only like Star, Star Wars, Wars books for the past past couple of years. Mm -hmm. So that's interesting that they even have that, but. That one just has the vibe, too, of it probably is a little more kid And the art style and everything, too, on the inside. Um, yeah, it's 12 issues in, but so this is the one coming out this Another week. Another High Republic story, though, which either way is just cool because, again, that's an era we don't know anything about. In Star Wars. Yeah. So Stillwater issue 12. It's another series I've been interested in getting into, but it's kind of far into it where I'll probably catch up eventually. But I do like the covers for Stillwater. Um, but we've got issue 12 out this week. Skybound logo on the back. Who's the writer for that? Chip Zdarsky. Yeah. Oh, okay. Daredevil writer. Oh, is he really? Yeah. Okay, nice. Yeah, great writer. So this is a new one out this week from Vault. It's called We Ride Titans. This looks incredibly cool. So we've got first cover here. Um, this one, from what I can tell of the covers, is like mechs versus like kaiju creatures. We've got another Pacific cover. Rim. Yeah, actually, yeah. yeah. Pacific Rim. Power, like Power Rangers. Very much. Oh, yeah, literally. Yeah. yeah. Not. I guess it's not too uh, original, yeah. but it looks cool. But I'm it's kind cool. of. I mean, kaiju and giant robots. Literally, I will read anything that involves those two things. So we've got 
third one right here. The covers are awesome. We've got a bunch of these in. So I think this is one, if you like those kinds of series, you should probably pick up and just give it a shot. They have a great tagline on the back too. Of, Kaiju hit hard. Family hits harder. Oh. <laughs> that's like a, that's a Fast and the Furious line. That, that's that's family. like when, when they fight the Kaiju in the next Fast and the Furious, like that's what they're going to say. Yeah. We've got this one right here, which is a cardstock. I believe, yeah, it's the... The naked one, it's all... Ooh, ooh, yeah, ooh. the yeah. nice glare on it. Nice. We've got that one. I think we've got, yeah, one more cover, which I like this one a lot. You know, he, he, very doing... Cool. Yeah, very cool. So, yeah, I'm really excited to read this, though. I'm going to add that on my fun. list for sure. Yeah, you should. Yeah. All right, so next is what's the furthest place from here? I read the first issue. This is issue number three, I think. So... This story is very Lord of the Flies. Ooh. Yeah, so it's basically like a society of kids. Mm -hmm. There are older kids, and once you reach a certain age, it's kind of like, okay, you got to get out of, like, the kids' territory, and mm -hmm. we don't really know where, like, the adults or the young adults go. Right. So it's very, like, brutal. Cool. Um, but, yeah, really big Lord of the Flies uh, kind of vibe. So I've enjoyed the first one. I need to get the second one. And I, I didn't know there were only three in. I thought that series had been going on a lot longer. No, no. Yeah. I think it's kind of coming out, like, intermittently. So. Which is good because i do need to jump on it yeah like, yeah you one. have time to catch up so there we go for that one uh next we got nyx which i don't know or too Nyx's. much oh is it nix i would assume it's Nyx. Oh, okay cool yeah <laughs> it's all capitalized you know yeah so There's it's like spaces. it's like is it blink 182 or blink 180 <laughs> does, has anyone ever said blink 182 uh, i think they do in australia that's a whole nother uh live stream we can get into but here's this cover right here for nix or nyx we've got cover c she has what looks to be Skyrim powers or something with her fire hand. So this is three issues in. I like this one actually features Vampirella. This is uh, the D cover here. So that looks like a lot of fun. Oh, you said that one features Vampirella? Yeah, look oh, at her. Does. There look. she is. Can't miss her. Yeah. You really can't. You All think, right, Tyler. you think we'll ever go a stream where we don't talk about Vampirella? Where she I... doesn't find her way in like these, in these books? I don't know if we'll ever make it, man. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if we need to expect it. I'm going to pass this one to you. Yes. All oh, right. Actually, I'll hold them up yeah. for you. So, I'm a, ashamedly, I am a big Sonic the Hedgehog I wouldn't be fan. ashamed. I love Sonic. Well, I mean, like, to an extreme level. Okay. Like, I, okay. I know the, all the lore. Like, that's that's a whole other stream later. Is I'm just going to ramble about the Sonic <laughs> lore. And what's awesome about this Sonic miniseries, it's only two issues in, I believe, it was, was the Imposter Syndrome. Yes. Yeah. Uh, introduces two new characters, the key one being uh, Surge. And the reason Surge is important is because Surge is, in this story, a evil like clone of sonic technically uh, oh oh is jody thank you oh, oh no Nick's okay is a villain oh, oh man is this a book. good series do we need to check this out jody please let us know yeah i kind of am into that i know nothing about vampire that sounds cool yeah yeah but yeah with sonic uh uh surge is an evil clone technically of sonic and this is a reference to back in the Archie run of Sonic the Hedgehog, oh. we had Scourge, who was also an evil Sonic. Okay. And this is like, you know, we can't use those characters, but here they are anyway. <laughs> it's like, like Scourge has Put like... Put a different skin on him. <laughs> Scourge is one of the most like requested and like favorite characters from that comic run. Okay. And since we couldn't use him again due to one of the funniest back, like lawsuits in comic book history, everyone should dive into that rabbit hole. It's nuts. <laughs> Uh, we can't use Scourge, so here's Surge. Okay. It's just the same. These books are so good. Yeah, they look fun. This is issue two, so I know that I'm going to catch up, because I've told Tyler before I want to read the Sonic comics. I mean, I love playing the video games, so this is the A cover here, and then we've got the B cover here, so got two covers to choose from, but I'm really excited about the Sonic series. Yeah, I could go on. <laughs> so we're going to speed this up a little bit. We've got Undiscovered Country 18 from Image. So this one's pretty far into it, but let us know if you yeah. want that. Have you read that one yet? No, I haven't, actually. That one it's... is interesting. No, yeah, it looks cool. It's one of those that's kind of far into the series, so, but she, I haven't read it, but she's a Vampirella comics. Cool. Oh, okay. Thanks, Jody. Nice. Look into that some more. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Discover Country looks cool. It's kind of far into it, but obviously if you've been keeping up with it, pick this up. Um, I'll get to it eventually, I think. So we've got, speaking of mechs being cool, uh, we've got Transformer Wreckers, Tread, and Circuits. So this is number four. I what think it's can a... you tell me about Transformers? <laughs> I've seen the movies. 
the Michael Bay ones? No, I've seen like a lot of the animated ones. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I have seen the Michael Bay ones, but I'm not that late, you know. But we've got issue four. I think it's going to be a five part series. Might be wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure. But yeah, I kind of want to start reading the Transformers ones too. My reading list is kind of ridiculous right now, really working on it. But yeah, pick this up Transformers. We've yeah. got our favorite girl here. We got Vampirella. There she is. Woo-wee. Vampir nurse. Van- she, uh, apparently the bad guy in the NYX series. Look at that. <laughs> By the way, yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah, yeah. I guess if you're reading Nyx, you know, she's the bad guy. Yeah, no, that's really cool. I didn't know that. But yeah, this well, is a cosplay cover. I really actually like this cosplay cover. She looks like she has a secret, yeah. you know? <laughs> this other cover is really sick. Vampirverse. Yeah. There we go. This is issue number I didn't say five. I like the Egyptian vibes on that one. The Egyptian vibes Very are cool. yeah, really nice. So okay, this last one. All right. Who we? All this right. Is part of a personal project that I think we're oh, gonna take up. Oh, not the last one. Second to the last. Very exciting. But the longest. But the longest. We've got the scorched out right now. So. I am making a vow to start reading the Spawn comics. Unless one of you guys tells me otherwise, I'm starting at number one. Because, uh, yeah, I am really going to put some work. In. I am. I really want to read this. This is, like, a really big deal, apparently, because it's all the different, like, universe spawns or whatever. Because you got, like, oh, on some of the other covers, you got, like, Gunslinger Spawn and some of the other ones. King Spawn. Yeah, King Spawn. They're all teaming up for this new run or whatever, so... I really want to get into this, so I've got probably years of reading to do. But Spawn fans, you need to pick this up. Every time that there's a Spawn comic on this show, I expect you to have oh, new Spawn lore to drop on me. I'm probably going to be so confused, too. Yeah. But it's going to happen. I'm going to yeah. give a little tidbit every week. Todd McFarlane, he's a writer. I know that much. <laughs> yep, so this I is the... writers, he's one of them. This is the D cover here. All right, we've got cover E right here. I like the... The art on this one. The other one had a cool a lady lot. spawn on it. How many yeah. lady spawns? Oh, I guess well the same lady spawn. I can tell you in probably five years how many lady spawns there are. Yeah, okay, good. <laughs> Once I get through the series, I cover want a full B. Bio on every lady spawn. Too. I promise a thesis. Cover B here. She is on. She's not on a motorcycle. There's just fire, which is kind of on brand, yeah. you know. Just cool spawns doing cool spawn things. We got some of our other spawn boys right here. Look at them. Very cool. This is cover G. That one's the one that has all the other spawns in it. Yes, yeah. So or some of the other ones, like with the regular spawn himself. Yes. And that one, this one is awesome. This is, this yeah. Is, this is the one you thought. This is the motorcycle one. Yeah, this is the motorcycle one. It's cover A. Which, of course, cover, that's cover A? Of yeah. course, the cover A for Spawn will be the motorcycle one. Yeah, I don't know if she is an existing character or yeah. what, but this looks so cool, so I can't wait to get to it. This, okay, so second to the last Spawn cover here. This one is definitely my favorite. Cover C, right here. Uh, the artist, oh gosh, I'm probably going to get yelled at. Capullo? Greg Capullo. Capullo, yeah. Yes. This is really cool. So Didn't even realize that's who it was that had done yeah, the art. Yeah. Great artist. Did a lot of Batman stuff. Oh, okay. Like yeah. I, <laughs> yes. <Next. laughs> cover C. And the last one for the Scorch, we've got cover F. Oh, this is Sylvester cover. So I've heard a lot about his art. His, I like it a lot. So yeah, cover F. And that's the last one for Scorch. So if you like Spawn, please help me. <laughs> I'm trying. If any of those interested, any of you guys, uh, please put down like which ones you want and be specific on which covers because as you can tell, there's, There's a lot. Of them. So we've got one more for the indie stuff and just for the night. I am really excited about this one. It's called Rain. It is Joe Hill. Look at this cover. I love Joe Hill. You know, Lock and Key and everything. I think he's incredible. I read a lot of his books. So I am very excited for this. I don't know anything about it. It's issue one. So it's obviously a starting point. Uh, we have a few of these in. I don't think we have too many. So definitely make sure you pick it up if you are interested yeah, in it. That like I haven't gotten to a lot of Joe Hill stuff. I know that's more your thing. I need to like actually. You really do. Down and get He's on great. It. I mean, that's Stephen King's Stephen son. King's son. Yeah, and which, I read a lot of Stephen King. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Joe Hill is great. I mean, he's definitely way more into the comic side of things, but just as a storyteller, he's definitely been trained well. So right. this is the last one of the night. I'm definitely gonna be keeping up with this. So let me know if you want it. Uh, Romel, we got you down for every single Scorch Romel, cover. Romel, look at Thank you. Thank you so much. Nice. Also, I hope I'm not mispronouncing your name. I don't think so. If we are, be? please let us know. Yeah, because absolutely. we love you. Just yell you. at us and just like get real personal with it if you need to. <laughs> That's the only way I'll learn. <laughs> All right, everyone. Thank you for watching. Hope you guys had a good time watching. Hope Comic you did. You know, we've already improved the set slightly. You know, not in the middle of the story in a super secret lair known as the uh, back room. 
Oh, full rain. Got you ah, down for rain nice. as well. Man, you got a whole you got a whole stack here. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching. And uh, we'll, we'll see, see you, you Tuesday. Yep, next week. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. Goodbye.